Are you trying to figure out how to submit your sitemap to Google Search Console? Well, if so, you're in the right place because in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that. Let's go. There are millions of stores and websites out there. And many people think that when they open their store or they open their website, that magically people will just start coming. That traffic will just start flowing through. But unfortunately, that's not how it works. And what we need to do as entrepreneurs is tell Google about our website. We need to tell Google about our store. And the best way to do that is with your sitemap. A sitemap is kind of like a table of contents for a book. It simply shows in order what are all of the things that are inside the book and where are they? So it's an easy way to keep Google informed of all of the pages that you've got on your website and all of the content that's in there so they know what's there. And when Google know what's on your website and where it is, then they know how to show that in the search results. And ultimately, that's what this is all about. It's getting your pages and your content to show up in Google search results because we all want that free and organic traffic to our website, right? Before I show you how to submit your sitemap to Google Search Console, there's two prerequisites that you need to be aware of. First off, you need to have a Google Search Console account. If you don't have that already set up, then click the link below and go and watch that video on how to create your account step by step. The second prerequisite is that you need to have a sitemap. You need to know what your sitemap is. And the good news, if you're using a major e-commerce platform like Shopify or WooCommerce or Wix or Squarespace or any of the main ones, most of the main platforms out there already do this for you. So you just have to locate the link of the sitemap and I'll show you how to do that in just a moment. But you do need that sitemap to make this work. So having said that, let's jump into Google Search Console and add the sitemap. So when you log into the Google Search Console, the first thing that you're going to need to do is check that you've got your domain or your property actually here in the list. If it's not there, then you need to click on add property and add that in and go through the verification process. That's pretty simple and easy to do. If you get stuck, we've got some resources and a video on how to do that step by step. But once you've added your domain in there, then you're gonna to go to that domain that you wanna add the sitemap for and go down to the sitemap section here. And here we're gonna add it in. But before we can add it in, we need to find out what is the actual URL of your sitemap. Now the good news, if you're on one of the major e-commerce platforms like Shopify, WooCommerce, Wix, uh, Squarespace, all the big main ones, most of those platforms do that for you. I've got an example here for you. You can see from the Shopify Help Center that sitemaps are generated automatically. You can find them in your Shopify store's domain such as yourdomainname.com slash sitemap XML. I'll put this in the description down below this video, but I've prepared here a little screenshot let me just show you here. These are the common sitemap URLs for Shopify, WooCommerce, Squarespace, Wix. You can see they're all very similar, right? Sitemap, 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 XML, sitemap. So all you need to do is uh, change this, swap this with your domain name, and then you'll be able to paste that in there and add that. Now before you copy and paste it in, let's just check that it actually works uh, for your website in case for some reason there is uh, some different setting on your website. So on our website, thetrafficninjas.com, we're using WordPress here, so it's sitemap XML. When you put it in, you'll see something like this where it's saying that this is the sitemap that's meant for consumption by search engines, meaning that this means something to Google, but to us as a human, it's not that uh, relevant. If you go to a Shopify store like this, for example, this one here, let's say I put in a spelling mistake, you'll get an error like this, like page not found, where if it's actually the right URL, for example, something like this, you'll see something that's kind of like this sitemaps.org schema. This is the kind of technical information that Google need to um, index your website and get all of those products and pages and collections and blogs into the search engine so that these actually show up in the search results when people are searching for things that are related to, to what you have. So once you've got that uh, URL, all you do is you copy and paste that and you're gonna go back into the sitemap here, paste that in there. Note that you don't need the whole thing, you just need the part after the slash. So it's just gonna be slash sitemap.xml and then press submit and that's pretty much it. You'll see the status over here. Sometimes it takes a couple of minutes for that to process. I've seen it happen before where when you first submit it, it says error and then you refresh it and do it again 30 seconds later and then it's successful. So that does happen sometimes, but you'll be able to see the status of what's going on there. And then normally when you click on it, it'll show you like, hey, there's subcategories in there as well. And you can just see that it's been processed successfully. Now that the sitemap is submitted, a common question that I get all the time is, do I need to keep resubmitting it? The short answer is no. Once it's submitted, Google will go and check that every few days or every week or so and automatically refresh the content for anything that's changed on your uh, website. One of the purposes, one of the functions of the sitemap is to keep Google informed of the changes that you make. So every time you update a product or a page or a section on your website, that automatically gets updated inside the sitemap and Google are able to pick that up and they'll, they'll know about that. So you don't need to resubmit this on a regular basis. This is kind of like a set and forget process. You set it up once, you check that it's worked once, and then we're good to go. 
what if you can't find your sitemap? What if you're using a platform that it's not one of the ones I've just shown here and it's a different one and where's the sitemap? Well, the good news is you can just Google it. You can Google what is the sitemap for my platform, the platform that you're using. So you could type into Google, let's go to Google here. Uh, what is my sitemap URL for platform name? So what's the platform that I haven't mentioned here? I'll just type in Wix, just as an example here. And then you'll get here, it tells you here, see, sitemap.xml. For most websites, it's going to be something similar to this. So you can just Google it and find what is the actual structure for the platform that you're using. Now that your sitemap submitted, what else is there to do inside the Google Search Console? Well, I'm glad you asked because I've got a whole video on exactly that. There's a whole goldmine of information here inside the Google Search Console under the Performance tab in particular. This one over here, the Performance tab. And I've got another video on that. If you're interested in that, I'll put the link below and we'll go through that step by step. So that's it. If you've got any further questions, just drop them in the comments below and I'll be sure to have a look through those. If you found this video helpful and useful, go ahead, press the thumbs up button. And if you haven't already subscribed to this channel, you know what to do. Go ahead and subscribe and hit the bell notification so you don't miss out. I'll see you in the next video. Let's go.